All right, we're getting ready to start. Are we good? Good to go. All right, well, praise the Lord. Welcome to Bible study tonight. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord. And um, first, first Bible study of the year. And we are in the book of 2 Timothy. And we'll tr- continue in chapter 1. We didn't we get to, chap- to verse 7 the last time, so we'll pick it up tonight in um, verse 8. So let's look to God in prayer and ask His blessing upon the Bible study and the things that He will share with us tonight from the Scripture. Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight for this time to be in Your house. We're thankful for this Bible study. We ask, Lord God, that You will bless it. We give You praise. We give thanks to You. We ask, God, that Your mercy and grace will fill our life this new year. We ask, God, You'll continue to guide us and lead us in the ways of truth, in the ways of righteousness. We ask Your blessing upon this Bible study. We ask that you will prosper us in the things that you've called us to do. Bless our life. Bless this Bible study. Help us, God, as we look to you in all things. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. 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 So we are in um, 2 Timothy. And we want to pick up in verse 8. And we're talking about contenders of the faith. Or one, or you know, this maybe it's a good theme for this year. You know, because... We want to be warriors and soldiers of the cross. That's what God wants us to be. And we sing the song, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And so we all know that being a soldier means we have to endure hardness. It requires discipline. And not everything about our life is going to be easy. But as a soldier, we can do it. As a soldier, we can fight for the truth. We can fight for freedom. We can fight for the things that God wants us wants in our life. And so that's the theme in which we'll continue this, this um, Bible study in, is contenders of the faith. I want to be on God's team. Amen. Amen. I want to be one that will stand with God and be a voice for God because He's looking for people. He's looking for men and women that will be His voice, in, especially in this time where there's so many voices that want to speak contrary to God, I want to be one that will speak for God. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot of discipline, a lot of uh, mental strength. It takes uh, toughness, spiritual toughness. And uh, it, God can help us. Because, like I said, we left off um, last Bible study with that verse where he said, God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of His sound mind. So He gave us what we need to be a soldier. He gave us His Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Amen? And He's given us what we need to make it. And so thank God for the Holy Spirit of God. And so tonight we'll pick up in verse 8. He said, Be, thou therefore, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. So we're talking about contenders of the faith. This is what God wants us to do. This is what he is looking for in Christians, in believers, not to be ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, we should never, never in our life be ashamed of the, what is the testimony of Jesus Christ? Well, the Bible said the testimony of the Lord is the spirit of prophecy, right? But really the testimony is the word. Our testimony is what we testify, our words. And so the things that Jesus stands for, His standards, His um, vision, His morality, His laws, His commandments, the Bible said, don't be ashamed of it, right? Don't be ashamed of it, stand, be be one that will contend for it, right? Don't, don't, um, Don't ever in your life back up from the truth of the gospel. Like I said, we are very um, reasonable persons and then, and we're not here to be, you know, one that will, you know, cause trouble and we're not here to start a fight or any such things, but at the same time, we're not going to back down from the truth, Right? We believe in the Word of God. We believe in the testimonies of Jesus Christ. And Paul here is writing to Timothy, a young warrior of Christ. 
And he said to him, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Right? The testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I'm not ashamed to tell anybody that. I don't care who they are. I respect you. I respect what you believe. But I'm not ashamed to stand up. I'll preach to the Muslims and tell them that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I will tell the Buddhists that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I will tell anybody that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Now, they may not want to accept it, but that's fine. It's freedom. They have their freedom to do whatever they want to do. But I'm not going to be ashamed of it. I'm not going to stand and say, well, you know, you know God, He's a God of love. He welcomes everybody. It doesn't matter how you come to Him as long as you come to Him. <laughs> no, you can't get to Him except by Jesus, right? And I will be a contender of that. I will tell people because that is the only way to get to God is through Jesus Christ. He is the door, right? And you can't get to God any other way beside coming through the door. And so be one that will, that is not, be, be that Christian, that is not a shame of the testimonies of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Now listen to what he's saying there. Number one, he said, stand with God, stand with his people, <laughs> and be a part of the affliction. <laughs> right? Notice that he didn't say, be a part of the blessing. <laughs> he said, be a part of the what? The affliction. What is affliction? Pain. Suffering, right? People don't like this aspect of Christianity. They don't like this aspect of they want the grace. And thank God for the grace. I want God's grace in my life, right? I want the mercy of God in my life. I want the blessings of God. I welcome those things. But you remember what Paul said? He said that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and what? The fellowship of his sufferings. There are both sides. We want, in Christianity, we can't just want the good. And everything is good altogether, but we can't just want just the blessing and the love and the peace and all these things. We got to man up and bear our cross, as Jesus said, right? He said, take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. That's being part of, that's, that's, you know, part of the affliction. Of us of self denial and taking on that instrument of death, the instrument of suffering, and follow Christ. Amen. And not only that, he said to Paul said to crucify the flesh, put to death the works of the flesh. That's part of the suffering. And so I'm talking about contenders of the faith. Stand with God. He said, Don't be ashamed. Of the testimony of our Lord, stand with God, right? Nor of me, his prisoner, stand with the people of God. He said, but be thou partakers of the affliction of the gospel. As Christians, we are called to suffer for the name of Christ. All that live godly shall suffer persecution. Amen? Isn't that a wonderful thing tonight? To be able to suffer for Jesus. <laughs> I'm teasing, right? <laughs> but Paul said that. He said, I glory in my infirmities, in my weaknesses. He said, because when I am weak, that's when Christ, His strength is manifest in me. All right? And so, yeah, of course, none of us really love affliction. I'm not promoting affliction. But he's saying, be a partaker of it. In other words, if there is affliction, if there is pain, if there is suffering for the gospel, don't be ashamed of it. Right? If, there, if it comes, I'm not saying you should pray for it. Oh God, let me suffer. No, no, no. That's not a good prayer. Right? God, I want to know. I want to know what it's like. Uh, he will let you know by and by. You know? <laughs> don't pray for it. Right? Don't ask God for it. He might just end. That might be the prayer he answered. Right? But I'm saying in the sense, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the essence of being a Christian, in, the, in, in it, there will be times when you have to take a stand. There will be times when you have to stand with God. There will be times when you have to stand with the people of God. 
There will be times when you have to partake of the affliction of the gospel. Be a soldier, is what I'm saying, right? Be a soldier. Like I said, I, I was a soldier at one time. Not every day was a battle. There were times that I was shamming. <laughs> there were times there was nothing to do. But then there were times when you were in the trenches. There were times when you had to dig your, your own foxhole. There were times when you had to do those 10K march. Mar and, 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 it, and it wasn't easy because they always put those tall guys in front. <laughs> and they will take a big step and you got to keep up with them, right? But there were times when it was easy also. And that's what it's like being a soldier. Not everything is a challenge and everything is a battle. But there are times when you have to dig in. There are times when you have and your faith will be put to the test. There are times when you pray and you have to go back and pray again. And you have to pray again. You have to be like Elijah. You know, he told the, he told his servant, he said, go and look. Look towards the, the ocean. He's looking for a cloud, a cloud that will bring the rain. And, he, and the, man, the servant went and said, there's nothing. He said, go again. Seven times. Right? Now while the servant was going and looking for the blessing, the man of God was there on his knees, his head buried in his knees, and he was praying. He didn't stop praying until the blessing came. It didn't, it didn't come the first time, right? He just kept praying and praying and praying until God sent the rain. And, a lot, and, and so that's what it's like, be a part of the affliction. Not everything about Christianity is glorious. But in the end, there is glory. Amen? In the end, there is glory. And so you say, well, I, I, I decided to follow Jesus He's God. Everything's going to be easy. My whole life is going to be a blessing. Everything is going to be just peaches and cream and, and get up and it's going to be all wonderful every day. You're in the wrong world. <laughs> right? You're in the wrong. You have the wrong Christianity. Paul said affliction. Amen. Be thou therefore, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, he said, but be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Amen. And so three things there. Stand with God. Stand with the people of God. And endure the affliction like a soldier. Amen. It's part of being a Christian. And we look at verse, uh, verses 9 and 10. He said, who had saved us and called us with an holy calling... Not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and had brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. God saved us for a purpose. God saved us, and, and, and through the grace of God and salvation, God, He said, He abolished death. Now, death, like I said, is not, you know, we look at death, and, and it is, it is part of death as somebody dying and leaving this world, you know, and, and that is death, right? The physical death. But really what He's speaking about is death means separation, separation from God, right? When Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead, He nullify separation from God for all those who believe in Him. Amen? And so He put it to death. The Bible said He, he put the writings, the, the, the ordinances, He nailed it to His cross. And He made it an open shame by triumphing over death and Satan and all the principalities and powers. When He rose from the dead, that was victory. Victory for all who believe in Him. Amen? And so when He said in verse 9, Who had saved us, thank God, that's the first thing He did, he saved us from sin. He saved us from eternal separation from God. And He saved us from the power of darkness. Now, Satan still has the ability to tempt us, but he doesn't have the ability to govern and rule in our life. If we yield to the temptation, that's on us, right? We're the one that yielded to it, right? But he has no power. Satan does not have any power over the people of God. He does not. We belong to God. Right? And He doesn't have any power over us 
The only power, the only authority that Satan has over us is what we give him. And if you don't give him any, then he doesn't have any. Right? And so he said God saved us. And not only that, but he called us with an holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. In other words, before God even began to recreate this world. And before he even, began, before he even um, created man, he already had a plan. The angel failed him when Lucifer sinned and, and rebelled against the Lord. They failed him and they had no chance. They were kicked out. They fell. There was no second chance for them. But when God, before God made man, he put a plan in place. If man should fail like the angels did, God had a backup plan. God had a plan of salvation. It was before the world began, it was determined that if man would fail his test, which was given to him in the garden, don't eat of the fruit, if man will fail that test, God had a plan that one day he will send his son Jesus Christ to die for us. And through that death, burial, and resurrection, salvation will be given to us. Redemption will be given to us. And that we will be able, by God's grace, and through that work, not of our own work, but through the work of Jesus Christ, we will to be pulled back into the family of God and be a part of God's eternal purpose. God has an eternal purpose for all of us. And so he said, Who had saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. He said, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our, of our Savior Jesus Christ, who had abolished death and had brought life, and immortality to light through the gospel. This gospel is powerful to those who believe it. Amen. If a person will bring, can believe this gospel. If a person can trust in the words of God. He said not only they will understand what life is all about. God will breathe life into us. Amen. God will bring life into us. But not only that. But he said he will bring immortality amen in other words there will never be a time when we will cease to exist in the presence of god those who don't believe will be banished from the presence of god but those who believe and trust and make jesus their hope and and allow christ to be their lord and savior they will live forever god already have a city prepared for us amen he already have mansions built for us you already have all these things in place. The plan is already laid out. We just have to get there. Amen. Thank God I can live with him forever in his kingdom. There is a better home for us. And there is a place prepared for those that have faith in God. And, and are willing to be partakers of the affliction. There is a place, a good place for us. Amen. In verse 11. In verses 11 and 12. We'll read those two verses 11 and 12. Paul, it shows us, Paul wasn't just writing words here, you know. You know, he was an example of a true warrior. We're talking about contenders of the faith. Paul was a true soldier of the gospel. He was a real warrior. And he said there in verse 11, he said, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for which cause... I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What a warrior. <laughs> right? He said, God called me to be a preacher. God called me to be an apostle. God called me to be a, a teacher. And because of this calling on my life, now, if you're not called to be a preacher and a teacher and an apostle, but you're called to be a Christian, because of that calling on your life, you will suffer certain things. Amen? That's just part of being a Christian. If you are afraid of suffering for the gospel of Christ, then you will be in really bad shape when it comes to being a Christian. If you're, if you're, a, you're afraid or ashamed to be labeled a Christian, be labeled one that believe in God or you're to be looked down upon by others or to look at people may say funny, strange things about you or whatever. If you're ashamed of that, you will be in really bad shape. 
Because that is part of being a Christian. That is part of being a child of God. It comes with the calling. It comes with the territory. And so let's just embrace it. Whatever Jesus, I know, be like Paul, I know in whom I believe. Right? The world can say what they want. They're all going to come to their time of death anyways. They're all going to come to their end anyways. They can speak as big as they want to. They can say all they want to. But they cannot escape death. It is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. Right? And so, let the world say what they want. I know in whom I believe in. Amen? And that's what he's saying. He's saying, God called me to be a preacher. I'll tell people the truth. I preach the truth. I preach the gospel. And because of it, I suffered a lot of things. And you know all the things. It's recorded in, in the book of Corinthians of some of the things that he suffered. Beatings, imprisonments, uh, hunger and peril and all kind of, all form and everything. He was stoned to death and all the things he went through. Right? All the things he went through. But listen to what he said. He said, nevertheless, I am. I'm not ashamed. See, Paul understand one of the reasons why Christians don't stand up for what is right is because they're ashamed to stand for what is right. Amen? And so he keeps saying this over and over. He said, don't be ashamed of the gospel. And here he's saying, I am not ashamed. He said, for which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. In Romans he wrote the same thing. He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of salvation unto them that believe. Amen? And so, as a Christian, we have to get that out of, out of our mind. And I, I'm not I'm just teaching here tonight. I'm not saying anybody's ashamed. I'm just saying we have to get that in our mind. I am not ashamed of anything. Matter of fact, <laughs> the world should be ashamed. Amen? They should be the one that is ashamed, not me. I am saved, amen? I am not living in sin. They're the one that is living in sin. And so, as a Christian, we have nothing to be ashamed of. Amen? Nothing, absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing, nothing, nothing to be ashamed of because God lives in us. If He's not ashamed of us, then what should we be ashamed of? Amen? If he's not ashamed to call us his brethren, then what should we be? Why should we be ashamed of anything? Let the world say what they want. I will stand with Jesus. Amen? And so he said, I'm not ashamed. He said, but I love He said, for I know whom I believe. We know Jesus. Amen? We know Jesus tonight. I know in whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that whatsoever I commit to him, he is able to keep. And so in verse 13 and 14, it really brings it down to us on a personal level. Of course, he's speaking to Timothy, but it brings it, up, bring, brings it down to us also. He said there in verse 13, he said, Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. You go back to verse 7. He said, He didn't give us a spirit of fear, right? But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Here he's telling us, he said, we have to keep. We have to keep what God gave us. You know, a lot of times people think, you know, once I pray a prayer of salvation, I'm good to go no matter how I live. That is not true. We have to keep ourselves in the love of God. We have to keep ourselves in the faith. We have to keep what God has given to us. God gave us salvation. He gave us uh, faith. He gave us things that He have imparted into us when we received Christ. We have to keep it. Amen? He said, Hold fast that form of some words, which thou hast heard of me, in faith and in love, which is in Christ Jesus. And He said, That good thing which was committed unto thee, Keep, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. In verse 15 through 18, he shows us that as a Christian, and this is so true, even unto this very day, not everybody is going to stand with us. 
right? Not everybody is going to stand with us. And I, I always marvel at this, I always think upon this, that it seems like every time God gets ready to do something, every time God's getting ready to do something, like, say, when he, you know, every time judgment, it seems like He's getting ready to bring a major judgment upon the world. Say, for instance, when He's getting ready to judge Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adma and all and, and all those cities around her, Abraham couldn't persuade God to stop it because not even five people were saved. Amen. And I'm not saying it's in a negative sense, but if you look at the history, you know he couldn't find anybody that was saved. If he had kept going on to one, there they probably wouldn't, wouldn't even been one person there, right? When he getting ready to broad judgment upon Nineveh, he said, "120,000." Right? Six score, right? Something like that. 20 is a score. 120,000 people in that city of Nineveh. He said all of them were wrong on the side of God. He said they couldn't even discern right and wrong. When he was getting ready to judge the world, he said one man found grace in the sight of God. What I'm saying is when God is getting to wrap things up, it seems like the number gets smaller and smaller and smaller of people who genuinely believe and trust in Him. Right? And so he's saying here, he said, not everybody, even Paul the Apostle, you know, he, he, he experienced this in his time. He said in verse 15, he said, this, know thou, this thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. Right? All that were in Asia. This man went over there, hazarded his life for the gospel, risked his life, beaten, stoned, all these things. Reach, all, reach these people for God. And now he said they all turned for me. Right? But that didn't st stop him from standing for what is right. He wasn't going to comprom compromise the gospel. He wasn't going to change. He said, this no, verse 15, this thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. And what I, what I want to say is that, yes, there will be those who will turn against God and the people of God and stuff, but not everybody. And so we thank God for every Christian that will stand. Amen. We thank God for every Christian that will make up in their mind, I will stand with God. I will stand with the people of God. I will stand and bear the affliction of the gospel. Thank God for people like that. And God have people. Amen. God have a lot of people, even in our times, people all around the world. Man, some of them will lose their arm, their leg, their head, lose their life just for the gospel. They're not ashamed to stand. Amen. We got it good in America. You know, but there, there are people all around the world that are not ashamed. They're living their life. They're laying their life down for the gospel. And there are many of us in America also who are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. But we stand for what is right and what is true. And though there may be those who will not stand, there will always be those that will stand. You know, as Elijah thought, or uh, was Elijah? Yeah, it was prophet Elijah. He said he thought he was the only one. Lord, they kill all your prophets and I'm the only one that's left. I'm the only one, Lord Jesus, that is doing right. I'm the only one that's serving you, God. And the Lord said, Elijah, he said, I have reserved unto me 7,000 7, men who have not bowed their knees to Baal. You see, there were people that did not compromise, and God knew who they were. Elijah didn't know them, but God knew. Right? There were those in Israel who said, no, we're not going to turn from God. We're not going to turn away from the people of God. We're not going to turn away from the truth. We will stand with God. And, and, and God knew who they were. God said, I reserved them. Right? I kept them. I, I protect them because they want me. And because they wanted me, I will keep them. And that's the way God is. There are people all around the world that want the truth. Amen? And even though there are those who, who, who don't want it, there are always going to be somebody that do. And we thank God for that. Amen? And I want to be one of those. I want to be in that number. Lord, I want, all, I want everybody to go to heaven. But I want to be in that number too. Amen? I want to be a part of that group also. And so thank God for everyone who is willing to take up their cross, deny themselves, and follow Jesus. He said there, 
In verse 17, But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. Thank God for every brother like Ones Onesephorus, Onesephorus, however you say it. <laughs> Thank God for brother On. <laughs> right? He found Paul. He sought out Paul. Paul was in prison. And he, he, he went and looked for the man of God. And he brought him what he needed. He took care of the man of God. Amen. Paul, everybody in Asia forsake me. I'm in Rome. But there was a man. See, we all need God. The great apostle. It doesn't matter. We all need each other. Paul, remember this, what this man did for him. Amen. I'm going to wrap it up. We just got a couple minutes here. We'll go to um, verse 7. I'm just going to read it. We'll probably talk more about it next week. But this is what he's talking about. Contenders of the faith, right? Being a soldier for the gospel. He said there, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Talking about what? Contenders of the faith. We have to stand because there's a generation coming behind us. If we don't tell them the truth, they're all going to fall into compromise. Amen. If it's one, if we can influence, even if one, we can influence one. He can take it to the next generation. Amen. Remember the story about Billy Graham, his father and all, and they were praying, God, raise up a missionary, raise up someone that will take the gospel, not knowing that God was going to raise up his son, <laughs> right, while they were preaching. And look at how many people he preached to. He shared the gospel with so many people, right? And so we never know who God will raise up, but if we don't pass the torch of truth, down to the next generation, you know, what are they going to have left? A watered-down, compromised gospel that will just make them religious and wrong in the sight of God? No, we got to keep being contenders of the truth. Amen? And this is what he said there. He said in verse 3, he said, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that wore it entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for the masteries, yet he is not crowned. Listen to that, right? This is very important. He said, if he's striving for the masteries, the masteries, he said, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. In other words, he got to do it by the book. You got to do it right. That's the only time he's properly crowned. He said, The husbandmen that labor it must be first partakers of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all these things. Now, I'll probably go back and talk about it a little bit next time. But he said, Endure hardness as a good soldier. Be a partaker of the affliction of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of God. Don't be afraid of, of, to stand with His people. Be a contender for the faith. Be a soldier for the truth. Amen? What a good way to start this new year, to make a determination. I will stand with God, and I will stand for the truth. Amen? And with that, we'll close the Bible study tonight. And uh, um, be mindful of service tomorrow. Let's pray. Let's come. And worship God. And for all you who join us online, have a blessed night. Stand up for what is right. Especially the Word of God. And God will stand with you. you say, but what about the whole world standing against me? <laughs> I'd rather have God. <laughs> Amen. I'd rather have God because in the end, He's the one I'm going to stand before anyways. So I'd rather stand with Him. Amen. Amen. And let's close the Bible study in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this Bible study. We just want to give you praise and glory and honor. Help us all, Lord Jesus, to be strong in the faith. Help us, God, to be good Christians, to be strong Christians, to be warriors for the gospel. Help us, O oh God, to be what you call us to be, not to compromise our faith and our standing with you, but with your help and with the Holy Spirit, God, we can be true, Holy Ghost-filled, born-again Christians. For you. We ask your blessing now upon all of us in Jesus' name. Amen.